Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. It's good to be here again this evening on another Bible class that God has afforded us the privilege to share with you this evening one more time. I want to bless God for His goodness and His mercies. I want to thank God for those who are joining in this evening and pray that you'll be blessed as we share with you from the Word of God another time. Can I invite you to bow your head with me right now? I will pray God's blessing, amen, on this ministry. God, we thank you for this evening, Lord. We acknowledge your goodness and your mercies. We know, Lord, that your mercies endureth forever. Lord, as we share this evening, Lord, we recognize that we are having some challenges with our internet. Lord, we ask you for a miracle today. Pray, Lord God, that you may, amen, enable this medium to transmit this message that God, some people be blessed and you'll be glorified. We pray now in the name of Jesus against every hindrance. Hallelujah. We pray in the name of Jesus against every setback. We pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Against every stumbling block right now. And we claim victory in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you may hide, amen, the self behind the cross. Let your name alone be exalted, Lord. Amen. Let your name alone be praised. We pray now and anoint your servant to give an anointed word. In Jesus' name, amen. This evening, friends, we'd like to really share with you from the topic, the price. The price for greatness. Is there a price that you have to pay Amen for being great. I want to pray this evening that you be blessed with this presentation. And we seek to guide your minds to what God is saying in this time. What is greatness? And many people depending on how are they tested to deal with the, the, the of greatness that they got how were they tested how did their friends treat them in a time of crisis what is the value that they brought to greatness and what is the price you've got to pay for greatness and so we did say we are looking at the life of David and Job two great later David was elevated to be king of the united monarchy of Israel and Judah. David was a mighty warrior. He was courageous, passionate, obedient to the Lord, a great worshiper of the Lord. David was a repentant soul when he sinned before God. David had a great character and he, he had an outstanding zeal to build the house of God. David. As a matter of fact, when God rejected his predecessor, King Saul, as much as they were um, did a lot of bad things before God, God speared their monarchy, God speared their rulership because of David and if we look here in 1st Kings chapter 11 1st Kings 11 and verse 32 and 34 here is God admonishing one of the kings of Israel God said But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Jeroboam was guaranteed one city or one, one tribe in Israel because of David. That's how God made with David. David was truly a powerful soul. 
God made covenants with him. That's how great David was. And bear in mind the theme this evening, the price for greatness. Having looked at David, we want to now look at Job. Job. That was the introduction of the man Job. The story of Job is one of the first documents in history to concentrate solely on how a just God can allow the suffering of innocence, the life of Job. The book of Job is in the Hebrew Bible. It, addressing, it addresses the problem of theodicy, meaning why does God permit evil in this world? Through the experiences of eponymous protagonists. In other words, Job's life was used as a leading character to show the benefit of suffering with dignity and purpose. In other words, when you're talking about somebody who suffered with dignity and purpose, you would refer to Job. The life of Job was so profound that it transcend it, it is mentioned in Judaism, in Islam, in Christianity, in the Baha'i faith, in Mormonism. Job Islam, Job was one man that all of these religions mention. In the rabbinical literature, Job is called one of the prophets of the Gentiles. In Islam, he is mentioned as a prophet in the Quran. In Christianity, Job is depicted man let that sink into your spirit. David was a great man. Job was a great man. And I'm going to show you how either of the, both men great as they are i'm going to show you what transpired in their lives so the question i want to ask is how were they tested troubles of david second samuel 11 verse 1 to 5 and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when the kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the children of Ammon and it came to pass in an even tide that David arose from off his bed 